Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, today we are back on with the uh, little Portadyne radio. Now, um, I have done some work on this off camera um, partly because I did try doing it on camera and um, I'd have had to, uh, <laughs> I would have had to put that many um, beeps in it to uh, delete all the expletives I was um, producing while working on this thing. It would have been a uh, it would have been a nightmare, plus uh, for most of the time you would have probably seen either the back of my head or um, the back of my arms because it was quite tricky actually um, getting this to where um, I've got it now but what I'm going to do is I'll go through basically the work that I've done to it to get us to where we are now and uh, what the ne oh, well, we're going to go through the next parts and see if we can actually get this radio um, playing properly now the first thing we've done is we've made, uh, we've made this up now this is what's going to replace the uh, our uh, substitute for the line card dropper that we um, replaced that horrible um, falling apart asbestos thing. This is basically what's going to replace it. What we've got there is we've got 4.1 UF of capacitance, and it's actually two um, two UF uh, X-rated capacitors which I have individually selected. I've got a box bag of about 30 of two about 32.2 uf uh, x-rated caps and i went through every one putting various capacitors in parallel because they all have a tolerance they all have about a 10 percent tolerance on them not all exactly the same um so i went through them until i found two that when they were paralleled up and i checked the capacitance it was um 4.1 ohms uh, sorry 4.1 uf i don't know where my ohms come from there so what I did is I uh, paralleled them up, so we've got 4.1 UF there. Then I wanted a surge limiting resistor, now I did do the calcs and the calcs were coming out as a um, 33 ohm um, surge limiting resistor at um, 3 watts. Well I found a 33 ohm at uh, I think it's about 10 or 15 watts, so there is no way on the planet that thing is going to overheat, it's being massively underrun. Then all we did is we've put, uh, this doesn't, this is just a safety feature, basically what we've got is we've got a, um, one, uh, one, is it 100 ohms, uh, sorry, a 1 meg ohm resistor, it's actually two 500 ohm, uh, so, sorry, it's two 500k resistors actually in, um, series, because I didn't have any, um, big, um, juicy 1 megs in stock, and it's rated about 1 watt, it's actually two 1 watts, so it's rated at 2 watts. All that's there to do, I'm not even showing this on camera, all that's there to do is basically discharge them capacitors. Without that, this would work, but if you was to touch the end of the plug, you'd get a little, um, a little shock off it. That's just a bleed resistor, it takes off um, any charge which you're um, stored in them capacitors when the radio's been turned off. So basically, that's it. And what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to install this in the radio, and we're going to see whether we can get this thing to play properly. As well as that, what I have done is I've replaced the um, that horrible piece of grey wire that was um, being used for the speakers. Well, I've got a piece of it here. But yeah, this stuff. And it's basically, it's what a lot of 1950s and 60s TVs and radios used as the mains flex. Uh, I, I've got rid of that and I've put something on which looks a little bit more as it would have been originally. Basically a bit of twisted uh, red and black. It is PVC, it's not going to cause any problems. Um, I've replaced the speaker, as you can see. Now, it probably would not have been an oval speaker originally, but this speaker, I've, I've managed to get rid of that wooden hacked up baffle board which had been used to mount that much smaller speaker. I mean, we can see here, that's the speaker I'm using now. And that's the, uh, that's the uh, replace. There we go. I mean, it is a considerably bigger speaker. It's actually it's a Philips out of a 1960s um, Philips radio. That one that I scrapped for parts. Uh, it's the right it's um, right impedance. Like I said, it probably would have been a round speaker originally, but it is slightly better than what was fitted, and it does mean that I have uh, freed that up and have a feeling that that might go nicely into that little Sears silver tone we was looking at the other day. The I said that the speaker was absolutely shot on. Uh, that speaker's in really nice condition. There's no real, um, might have a little bit of rub to it. I'll have a look at it, but uh, it's certainly much better condition than what's in that Sears at the moment. So, 
that's come out and a bigger more powerful speaker has um, gone into this right I will show what I have uh, basically done on the other side of this radio I've only replaced um, a couple of resistors and three capacitors I'll show you what I've replaced uh, let's just uh, press this down there we've got that one that one that and these uh, resistors. I only replaced them resistors because they paralleled two resistors up and they didn't look brilliant and I had one of the right value and the right wattage to um, replace them too. But uh, we've got uh, that is what is referred to in a lot of radios as that capacitor. That is comes off the um, basically goes onto the control grid of the um, output valve and it stops DC getting from the uh, the valve before that, which is uh, which is that valve there. Basically, that valve there is your um, it's like um, an audio frequency preamplifier valve, and the output of that has got a couple of hundred volts DC on it as well as the AC. That capacitor basically takes that DC off there and just allows the audio AC into the um, main output valve, and if that goes leaky. Basically what it does is it turns the output valve more on than it should be and it drives that valve really, really hard. Two things are going to happen, either the output valve is going to die or your output transformer is going to die. So that's the reason that we change that capacitor on any old valve radio that we work on. Um, unless it's got ceramic capacitors in it, even then I'd definitely check it. If it's a waxy like that, um, I change them just as a par of course because it can... That failing can do basically right off a radio. Um, you kill the output transformer and things like that in these radios, and generally speaking, unless it's a particularly sought after one, they're not worth repairing. So, uh, the matter of course, for a under 50p component, you replace that. That little uh, capacitor there, that went um, between, it actually come off the same pin, so it's carrying HT as um, that one but that goes straight to ground and again if that shorted out uh, you'd probably kill your rectifier valve because it would um, draw the turn the rectifier, rectifier valve on hard trying to draw into a, um, a resistance or into an open into a dead short and it's going to damage your um, rectifier valve so that's the reason we've changed them two capacitors the next capacitor that we've changed now I'm not going to throw this one away I will keep this capacitor is uh, this one here. It is an American. Uh, it's made in the USA. I can't re re read who it's made by, but it's a 0 0.2 UF. Um, probably an oil filled capacitor. It's not a wax paper. And that goes straight across the mains. Now in America, um, obviously you've got 110 volt across it. Over here you'd have um, 240 volt across it. And it's what 70 years old plus it's an old capacitor uh, just for safety I've replaced that with a um, 0 0.22 UF um, X2 rated capacitor which is designed to be actually connected um, have mains on it these like I said are X rated capacitors they're not X2's really should use X2's for something like this but I'm using what I've got in stock and it's not going to cause a problem so there we are so far oh and basically then I've done some tidying up in the circuit as well because over the years as components have been um, changed uh, people tend to bodge them in so there's that lot there bits of wire bits where they've basically just um, fixed one component onto the chopped off leg of another component I basically removed all that extra bits of solder and stuff like that just to give me some more room in there and make things look a lot neater and tidier and I'll just flip the radio over and you can have an actual look what I've uh, what it looks like now with all them parts replaced and basically this is what we've got here uh, can we see that okay in fact I'll take you off the tripod and I'll take you for a quick tour right okay so we've now got a new uh, card coming in it's a pity it's white but it's the only two core uh, 0.75 I had um, in stock it doesn't really matter so we've got a new um, two core AC mains lead this comes in 
I've redone the um, the ground. In fact, I've actually changed the switching round on this radio. Originally, what would have happened is that the um, the switch there was in the neutral line, which was fine when you had the old two pair two pin um, reversible plugs. But with a polarized plug, it's much much better to have the switch in the live. So I've swapped it round. So um, basically, the live comes in into that switch there. I have replaced, um, where is it, that uh, capacitor there has been replaced by that capacitor there. Um, the resistor on the end of it, then two resistors, are that resistor which you can see underneath there. I've tidied up how this was actually wired up up here because it was a right mess with, um, that's basically had all these bits of wire like, uh, like these were strung off there so I've, re, uh, I've redone it and just basically made it a lot neater and tidier so you can see those are the two other um, capacitors that I replaced that one there and that one there I've left all the other capacitors in there and I'm not going to be selling this radio this radio is part of my collection so if any other capacitor fails in a few years time I'll repair it again it's not as though I'm doing this radio up uh, to sell on or I'm uh, Someone's brought me Granny's radio and um, asked me to get it working for them, which is, generally speaking, most of the radios that I repair. It's situations like that. It's either one that I've bought specifically to uh, do up to sell on, or someone brings me Granny's radio that they found in the attic, and uh, they want me to get it working for them. Um, right, so basically, what we're up to now is we need to install this, and... What this, where this is going to go, in fact, I don't know if I can do this while I'm holding the camera or not, um, but basically what the, where this is going to go is it's going to go there, like that. So it comes off the, off the switch, this little uh, green wire there will then connect to the other side of it, and we need a little link wire from the other side of the switch up to there, which is um, so to provide our H HT. Once we've done all that, we can... Uh, fire this radio back up again and we will see whether it plays I'm going to stick you back on the tripod while I do this little bit of uh, soldering anyway because it's uh, I can't exactly do the soldering while I'm holding the camera right so what we're going to do let's turn this round so we can uh, we can get it in a sensible position to work on I think that's a nice sensible working position yep and we have got what we need to do then is take a wire from there up to there. Well, because that's feeding um, the rectifiers that um, basically takes the uh, mains through that little surge limiting resistor there into the uh, rectifier. So we need a little bit of wire to go between there and there. And ideally, it needs to be insulated. Let's see what we've got in the. Uh... I'm just going through. Uh going through some components, see if I've got anything that's got a nice long leg on that I can use a bit of it, like that kind of thing there. The leg's far too long for anything I'll ever uh, use it for, so I can chop a bit of that off and reuse it. But what we do need to do is just give these a quick clean beforehand, just to, to make soldering a little bit easier. Let's give that on there and give that a quick, a quick polish. There we go, that's a, that's a bit shinier, isn't it? Right, lovely. And we're going to need some heat shrink. Let's get a bit of heat shrink. Um, I, as you can see, I generally I cover the wires that I've replaced with a little bit of um, heat shrink just to make them look look a little bit better. Someone had replaced some of uh, um, this in the past with um, a heat shrink, and it had all crumbled away when I touched it. As where the old stuff, the original uh, wire, the original. Um, covering that stuff still in really good condition but some of that had been replaced with something newer and I said unfortunately that newer stuff isn't as good as the uh, as the old stuff anyway let's cut this uh, let's see how much wire we're going to need it's not going to be very much let's cut that to length like that and what will we need to do we need to put a little uh, little loop on this end there to make it a bit easier to uh, work with. We'll hook that through there like that. And then what we'll do is we'll take 
this contraption and we'll kind of put that in position at the same time it should be easier to uh, solder these in position and I've got them both both through at once let's get that in there get in there you little sod you can understand why I didn't uh, do the rest of it on camera because so if you think get in there you little sod's uh, bad <laughs> I had some issues with this uh, with this one. I'll hold them in position while I solder them there. Don't worry about the cable tie around there. I've used such um, an overrated um, resistor; it doesn't even get lukewarm. Um, never mind hot. Right. I'm happy with the position of that. We've got our live here to go over to the um, to go over to the rectifier through that uh, that other capacitor. So let's cut a bit of this uh, heat shrink size. I'm not really using this as heat shrink per se, I'm using it more just as a, uh, is that the right way? Oh, yeah. I'm just using it um, to cover the wires so I don't have bare wire showing. Yeah, that's okay, it's close enough. And bend that round. position oops I just hold that in position while the uh, solder goes up there we go there we are wire soldered in there we just need to cut the excess off that just snip that off now, where did that go ah it went right through and get that out of the way so that is our um, basically our main side all connected up to the HT all we need to do is connect that to there and we can see if this radio is going to play in its new configuration and we can check voltages. We'll check the voltage on the um, anode of the output valve because that's the one that really, really matters. You don't want more. I've been told actually. I've been given a bit of information about these uh, radios by various people. Um, someone has said that the anode uh, on the output valve wants about 190 volts maximum on it. So that's something we can check. We can check that on the other side of the output transformer. And um, I've been given a couple of um, options what the radio might actually be. Now someone has said it may be a um, Portadyne, or at least he said it may be what's known as a um, was it an SU5 I think they said. Which I think is an American, uh, possibly American chassis designation for it. Someone else has um, said that it, they think it was a Portadyne um, table model 2. Now I had a look in... Uh, Radiomuseum.org, radio which is an online uh, repository of information for all these all things radio, and it did indeed come up with the uh, Portadyne Table Model 2, 
with an identical looking radio to this one. So um, it looks like that might be actually a possibility that this is a uh, Portadyne table model too. But the wh what someone said about the five um, SU seven, uh, sorry five S uh, five. SU or SU5 or whatever, I think it was 5 SU or SU5 that they said. Um, it could be that that is an American um, chassis designation for it. Doesn't sound that much like a um, an actual model number, but it could be the um, chassis number, the chassis model number. I'll just cut this a uh, little bit of heat shrink. Put that over there. We'll cut that down a little bit so we don't need all that showing. Get rid of that. Where is my emery paper? What we will do is just gently just give that a quick clean up. Just make it easier to solder to. Like that. I will say I have actually tested um, this little device that I've knocked up with the um, heater circuit and with everything connected up. Bear in mind at the time uh, I we was having quite a high um, mains voltage. It was measuring about uh, 244 which is really is quite high. Um, and I was getting about 71 volts um, across the entire heater chain. That's including with the um, the new uh, pilot bulb in circuit. So I was uh, I was quite reasonable to pleased with that. That'll be absolutely fine. Bear in mind that it's very um it's very rare for us to get a uh, mains voltage quite that high. Mine here is usually between 235 and 240 most of the time. So I can say I'm, I'm quite happy that that'll be fine. There we go. As we can see, we have our uh, we have our dropper connected back up like that. We have got our um, HT all connected back up. We have our new mains uh, flex on there. So without further ado, let's see if this thing is going to play. Right. We've got our new mains card. We've got our Replaced speaker, which hopefully should uh, be a little bit more, a little bit more man than the original one that was taken out. So there's nothing actually physically wrong with the speaker, and it will get used again in another project. I said probably for that uh, Sear Silvercam. But we will connect an aerial up. We will connect my test meter. there and what we're going to use this for is we're going to monitor the uh, we thought we need a couple of a couple of crop leads we will monitor the um, HT which is going onto the um, anode of the um, output valve and we will do that by measuring the wire coming off the output transformer not into the output transformer but off the output transformer because that goes straight to the anode so that's connected up like that. That goes to that, and then oh, hang on, no. That one goes to there. Otherwise, it's going to be a minus voltage. And this one, we can connect to the chassis of the radio. So this one goes on there like that, and this one connects on there like that. And that should show us the um, meter. We will. Uh, I don't actually. Most of my radios don't actually have plugs on them. Um, this is generally speaking how I leave the cable because in my um, office there's um, limited room on the shelves, and if I want to play one of my radios, I just use a safe block, which is uh, this little device here. It makes life a lot easier when you're playing with these old radios. So. Can see how we're set up here now. We've got the aerial in. 
we've got a, uh, a meter here showing um, basically the important voltage which is the voltage on the um, anode of the output valve uh, I will connect this up so brown to brown blue to blue that way that there is um, at ne neutral potential like I said if we connected them the other way around the radio would work but everything metal on the radio would be at mains potential um, another thing I haven't shown you actually is the dial bulb here I've actually put a um, it's a 20 ohm um, I think it's a 5 watt resistor in series with it and I've put a new um, dial bulb in so that just blows nicely and if it does blow in the future it won't kill the radio the radio will still work through the um, little resistor that I've uh, placed in there so without further ado let's uh, give it some power and see what happens so that's power on well that's the safe block down when I switch this on hopefully uh, the radio should start to work if you look the dial bulb has lit None of the um, valve heaters have gone bang, so our um, capacitive dropper is actually doing as it is meant to do. Let us see what uh, let us see what we uh, what we get. So far, we have got nothing, absolutely nothing on the um, HT. No, we don't seem to be. Hmm. Why are we not getting a HT? Obviously, we've got the uh, we have got the valve um, in series, or else the rest of the string wouldn't be um, lighting. But we don't seem to have any uh, any high tension coming up because we're not seeing it here at all, and we're not we're not getting anything on the radio. So uh, bear with me and we'll have a quick look back and see if we can find out what is actually um, going on. Okay, I'm back. Well, unfortunately it looks like... Um, just uh, disconnect that before I uh, touch anything. Right, unfortunately it looks like um, the rectifier valve's no good. There. We have heat continuity through it, but you put... Um, voltage onto it and basically we're getting absolutely nothing through it now before if you remember when we fired the radio up we was actually firing it up with a um, DC high, high tension supply so the valve being faulty wouldn't cause any issues it honestly just looks like that valve's tired or it's worn out because like I said I've just put um, measured the AC voltage going into it and I'm getting absolutely zero DC voltage um, out of it I have done the usual thing which is to take it out and check that all the pins are um, clean check that the valve socket is good and actually these are really nice high quality valve sockets they're not like the really cheap nasty Paxolin ones you're getting a lot of cheaper radios so it looks like I will be looking for eventually a new 25Z4G but for the time being, to see if we can get this thing playing, and um, I've done this plenty of times in the past, what I've done, if you look up here, is I've put a, um, a diode and a um, series limiting resistor across, uh, basically, uh, the between anode and cathode of the uh, rectifier valve. So basically what that's doing is that's providing the uh, rectification. It only needs to be halfway rectified for these AC-DC sets, so it's not a problem. So the valve is still it basically the valve is still there, its filaments are providing part of the heater chain, 25 volts of the heater chain. But apart from that, it's redundant at the moment, and we've got a resistor and a uh, diode basically doing the rest of its job. So with that connected in, um, in circuit, we will, uh, we will connect the um, meter back up to the transformer here. And just uh, Sorry, that goes to ground. That goes to the uh, plus on there. That's already connected up to the minus. So basically, we can uh, we can see what our um, the, volt the anode voltage on our output valve is um, with the meter, like we was doing before. Let's get you uh, back in and look. We're watching what's happening. 
So the only difference is now that they, basically all that valve is doing is providing part of the heater chain. It's not acting as the rectifier for the radio. So with any luck, when we fire up this time, we should at least get um, get something working. So that's the safe block down. Uh, let me plug the aerial back in just in case we get a, we get something uh, a little better in. So that's the aerial in, and we will switch on and we will see what happens. So we switch on, and that's much better. If we look here, we have got 185. That's 180, 191. It's slowing down around here. Let's wait for the rest of the radio to warm up. It's up to about 200. It's a little high for the um, output valve, but I'm not worried at the moment. Because the rest of the valves warm up, that might um, drop down a little bit. In fact, 200 is not too bad. It's a little hot for the valve, but it's not um, horrendous. No audio yet. Are we getting anything? Well, the heaters are fine. But so far, we don't seem to be getting any audio out. Not even getting any crackles at the moment. Which is a bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a pain. Okay, we do have um, high tension. My valve, in fact, let me just switch that light out to see if I can um, see whether my valves are lighting properly. Yep, all valves are lighting up nicely. But so far we have no uh, we have no audio. Now that is probably something daft and silly that I've done while I was uh just get the valves a quick. Make sure nothing is um Nope. Right, well, bear back with me in a minute and we'll try and figure out what um, what I have done wrong at this particular stage. Okay, we're back. And uh, I have to admit, a couple of days have actually passed since I um, started making this video. To be terribly honest, I've had a, one of the worst migraines I've had in a long time for the past uh, two days. So... Well, this was the last thing I really wanted to even uh, bother thinking about, so I did leave it for a couple of days. And quite frankly, it's probably a good thing, because uh, when I came back to it today, literally within 30 seconds of look at it, looking at it, I'd spotted my error. I mean, I've been a dozy tit, basically. Uh, what I'd done is... Uh, oh, I'll show you what I'd done. Uh, let's just uh, disconnect this again. And we'll disconnect this and I'll turn it up so you can see. Uh, basically, what I've done, I'll just uh, tilt this up so you can see it, is when I was wiring the um, heater chain in, I'd actually wired both sides of the heater chain to ground and just wired the dial bulb through the capacitive dropper. Now, the way that a capacitive dropper works, um, it actually basically dropped the dropped it to about three volts so it looked like everything was working because my dial light bulb was actually um, lighting up and everything was um, looking as bright as I was expecting it to but I'd actually wired the entire heater chain out of circuit so anyway I've corrected that and uh, we shall uh, see what it plays like now I'm just going to get you back down onto the chassis there so I'll uh, close the safe block. I've got it running just on the safe block uh, with the new ca cable that we showed um, earlier in the video. So uh, if we switch on and we can see the dial lights lit. And it, I don't ever mention this uh, earlier but that's actually a hundred milliamp um, six volt dial light bulb. But what I've done is I've run it through a um, basically in parallel with a uh, resistor. So the resistor is actually taking the um, Th dropping the 300 milliamps and that's basically just piggybacking on the back of it. Um, it's a bit dodgy but you can get away with it doing that little trick to get um, an easier to obtain bulb to work on the, one of these older radios. But here we go. But, uh, unless you can get through it somehow, it's just going to drag us all down. So it's about finding... Need to... 
that's running with the new speaker, which has made a big difference, I think. Nice and sensitive. But it's just as sensitive now that it was when it was running on my um, slightly snide bench power supply. So, uh, yeah. I'm uh, quite pleased with that. And the most important thing, if we just uh, make any promises, spin well, this round, why we're having this <laughs> and we'll just measure what uh, we've got the anode voltage we've got on the um, output valve. That's quite important, and we want about 190 volts really. So if we uh, spin this round to the meter, and we can test that by just going on this side of the um, output transformer, and we've got 189 volts, 190 volts. So that's absolutely. Spot on. Thanks very much, Jess. This is a new development in the bot game. It hadn't even occurred to me. <laughs> this was this was a new. And I've taken out the. Um, if you don't, you only saw in the other video. I um, just quickly podged in a um, resistor and diode. Okay. No, so no, that's a very very good observation. And we'll get like that just to uh, bypass the rectifier. And I thought that was um, a fault. But I've taken that back out. And we're. Um, leaving some foreign stuff coming in there we're actually that's actually on short wave so I think we're actually better than we were before we're actually picking a few stations up on short wave now not much because I'm only using that crappy little uh, wire aerial but the owner of the elephant camp. There's definitely a couple of short wave stations there, and they're quite, quite, they're quite um, loud and clear as well, which is quite nice. So yeah, I'll um, I'll get this back in its case. I'll pop back a bit, and you can see what it looks like when it's all uh, reassembled. Right there we go, all back together. We'll just. Um, Switch it on and we'll have one final play. I'm just turn the extra lights off so you can see. As you can see, the dial light, it just gives a nice little bit of um, illumination there. It's not it's not overpowering. Sometimes if you put too bright a light behind these, they look absolutely horrible. You just want a nice dim little glow behind the dial light. Behind the dial light glass, sorry. So turn that up. To create an independent Israel and Palestine able to this is um, short wave. I'm quite surprised I could pick anything up on short wave on just a little aerial like that. Okay, let's switch on to me to the wave. That works for me. Uh, I'm here for the next 25 minutes. What else can I it's squeeze really in actually quite nice and tonight wild. on the class? Of interference. There's not much hum there considering I've not replaced any of the electrolytics. I mean they have been replaced in the past it by the look of it, but um, there's not much hum there at all. National Lottery players. Are you there? Sorry, you can't be there. Choices we're going to make about how much we're prepared to pay in tax and uh, and how we can. Not very impressed with that. I'll switch it off. As you can see, the, I'll just put my lights back on. 
I've really not done all that much to the cabinet apart from basically I've just given it a wipe over with a little bit of Danish oil just to fill in any of the uh, worst of the scratches. Unless the cabinets are absolutely horrendous, I'd rather not refinish them. Um, I like a little bit of age showing on them to be honest. So um, yeah, I've basically I've just given the cabinet a really basic little wipe over. We'll look at the back, I'll uh, just disconnect the aerial so we can spin it round. It's a pity about the um, white cable, really, but I was literally using what I had got in stock. Um, so usually I would have either used a black car, um, perhaps even if it's a uh, customer repair and they uh, want to pay to the expense of one of the reproduction cloth covered um, cables. But for a radio that's in my um, collection, uh, I'm not all that bothered. Um, I've actually unusually for me I've actually put a plug on this one uh, normally I don't ever mention it before in my video normally when they sit in my uh, on my shelves in my office I don't actually bother putting plugs on them uh, because they cause problems on the shelf you know they're um, bashing up behind the radios they can scratch the radios they can damage the uh, back covers I'd rather just bundle the cable up and put elastic band around it to keep it safe and when I want to play them all I do is um, I use a safe block I just have one of these in the um, office and when I want to play with my radios I just plug this in and then connect the wires perfectly safe, 100% safe just put the wires in there, shut it down and you can play the radio but what I thought with this one I might actually um, take this down and put it in the living room for a uh, for a little bit um, I'm interested to see how good it'll do on shortwave connected up to the long wire aerial that I have so uh, I think it's going to spend a little bit of time um, having a play in the um, in my um, living room and um, actually with this radio the cable isn't a major um, issue like it is on most um, radios because uh, without having this removable back we can just uh, take the back off and we can uh, stow the cable inside it like that and I think this will um, go back on with that in there push it up like that it will. Yeah, there we go. So it's still fine to go on my um to go on my shelf and it's got its plug on it so like I say if I do want to play it. Um I can do. Obviously um like I say if I was restoring a radio for a customer I wouldn't quite do it the same way as um this. I will probably change all all those uh, wax capacitors wax paper capacitors like that, um, they'd all be changed, the electrolytic capacitors would be changed uh, because basically I don't want it coming back to me and all the valves would be tested any valves that would be low like at least 60% um, emission on them or had any leakage would be replaced for the simple fact I don't want the radio coming back to me that it's broken again after a couple of weeks, couple of months use this however is in my own private collection and um, if it stops working again, well, I can quite easily repair it again. So uh, that's why I've only changed a few components. I've changed three capacitors and, like, a couple of resistors. And that really is it. That's all I've changed in this whole radio. And the speaker. And the only reason I've changed the speaker is that the speaker that I've fitted now is just a little bit more in keeping with what the radio would have had originally. And the speaker that I took out of it, that tiny little one there, will do for another project. Like I said, I can use that in that um, little Sears Silvertone to replace the um, speaker which has basically just fallen apart in that. I think that's about the right size. It looks like it might be the right size for that Sears Silvertone. And this will benefit from having a slightly bigger speaker which doesn't have to have a little extension baffle behind there to make it fit. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little um, restoration of this radio. So, um... I'll leave it there for now. Thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.